The public supplies terabytes worth of data each month to the Department of Transportation. The agency wants to harness it and turn that data into action. Chief Technology Officer Maria Rote says it could improve safety for decades to come. She sat down with our Diane Cho at ELC 2015. Um, and we're doing a lot of work in the data space across the department, multimodal. Um, when you look at uh, federal railroads or you look at transit or highways and you look at all these silos of information of data that they may have and how do you bring all that together to inform safety so it's not just connected cities and data but also across multiple modes of transportation and bringing that together um, to really make safety decisions and really inform the public or whatever you might need to use the data for. And how do you prevent data overload in that situation? I have no idea. <laughs> I think some of it comes down to the consumer. How much do you really need? How much do you want as a consumer of that data? Can you filter out what you don't need? You know, if I'm giving up my location information, well, what do I need out of that? And how do I filter that to get what I need as a consumer? But on the other hand, industry, when you look at that amount of data that's coming in for research and you know, planning and population, when you look at transportation beyond traffic, uh, 2045 looks out 30 years, and how do you take the information of today to help inform planning that's looking out over the next 30 plus years, mm -hmm. and what the country is going to look like, and where the population centers are going to be, and how you plan for first mile, last mile, and bring all that together. So data is a huge piece of that, and you overlay data and transportation, demographics, and all the rest of that and how population centers are growing. It's a, a lot to pull in. Of course, the private sector is a big part of the equation here. Uh, what kind of data do you get from them? What's missing? And are there any pilot projects in the works now? Um, so I'll talk about one pilot project, um, one we're working on for a national address database. Um, where the cities are actually the authoritative source for addresses, cities and towns, because they build houses, right? Houses are being built and they assign the street and the numbers. And an address is an X, Y, and a Z coordinate. So you have an address that's not just a house or a business. It could be a mile marker on the CNO Canal, for instance, here. Um, it could be a lake, a geospatial coordinate for a lake. That could be an address. And the authoritative source of those addresses is coming out of the, the towns, the tribal areas, the cities. And, you know, the Census Bureau has address information because of census, and the post office has address information. And, you know, you have Google and you have others that all have this address information, but where's the authoritative source? So one of the projects that we're working on is, and this is really uh, for emergency response, when somebody calls 911 so that the operator knows that Lake Smith is where the emergency responders need to report to because that's where the caller's coming from. But when you take the authoritative source of that, it's not you know, the Census Bureau or the Post Office or FedEx or UPX or whoever that might be. It's coming out of those cities. So we've got a pilot going on that's, that's taking the information where there's two states where the information's coming from the cities, rolling up to the county, and then rolling up to the state level. And that's not happening across the country. Probably roughly half the states aren't doing that. But we're working with two states that are doing that to say, what can we do and how do we make that an authoritative source for emergency responders because transportation is responsible for 911. So that when you, if you're in an accident and you're in a lake and you go, I'm in Lake Smith, the emergency responder will go, oh, that's not 123 Elm Street. That's, that's, here's the geo coordinate and I can feed that to emergency responders so they know where to go. So that's one of the projects that we're working on and really taking that, that data and pulling that together and making it available. Last year, Congress passed two of the most comprehensive IT bills in decades. Uh, how have FATARA and Data Act impacted the work that you do? Um, I think around both of those, across the department where a lot of the information that we get from the, the states and other, other areas, you know, some of it tended to be silos. And we're working a project now where we can pull a lot of that together where understanding how data moves across the department, how the modes of transportation internally within, you know, within the department, how we share information across, um, you know, one mode to the other. I can't say we're doing it well today. We are moving the data, but understanding how that's moving and then how do we bubble that up into some kind of a dashboard that informs 
um, you know, decision makers and the rule makers on what we do. And FATARA has played a, a piece in that because it's giving us broader visibility into the systems that are pulling in that data from the state. So think about that ecosystem um, or system of systems and the information coming in from states and other areas and research data and how do you start pulling that together. So we've got some initiatives that we're testing on that. But that FATARA piece is giving us more visibility and more insight into how we're using that data across the department today and then what's in the realm of possible. And it's the same thing with the Data Act. All right, Maria, we appreciate your time and thank you for joining us on Government Matters. All right, thank you.